Today we're talking about some spring cleaning of the AR type. Those of you guys that know me know that I don't like to clean my guns. Now, I know I'm already gonna hear the hate in the comment section for the people that love to clean after every range session. Maybe it's therapeutic for you, whatever. I found that some people who overly clean can damage guns, especially rifles with going crazy with these improper rods and brushes and everything else, they just, they can damage stuff. Also, a dirty gun will run as long as it's lubricated. Now, obviously, it gets to a point where it gets so much sludge where it gets sluggish. But generally speaking, I can just shoot, lube, shoot, lube, repeat. However, every now and again, a gun should be cleaned. I get that. And additionally, I do keep my duty guns generally a little bit cleaner. Obviously, for a whole bunch of other reasons, that can be a whole other topic in and of itself. But my training guns, generally, I just run them. So I'll shoot thousands and thousands of rounds throughout the year. And then uh, usually at the end of the year or spring or whatever, I'll clean. So this gun actually was cleaned last fall. I put probably a couple thousand rounds on it uh, throughout the winter. So I figured it'd just be a good time, kind of a spring cleaning, just to show a functional cleaning of the AR. And this is not meant to be a presentation grade or a like super white glove inspection grade cleaning. Just how I quick down and dirty clean the gun relatively quickly, no fuss, no muss, but get it up and running. Thank you guys very much for checking out this video and spending a few minutes of your day with me. My name is Dave Tim. I do appreciate it. You can learn more about us at our webpage, gunsandtactics.com. And you can follow us online on all of our social media outlets to see all of our latest content. So I appreciate you spending a few minutes. So let's, uh, let's get to it. What you're going to need to clean. First things first, I would protect yourself. So I'm going to throw on the apron here in a second. I'm going to throw on some gloves. Uh, I'm all about keeping my hands clean. Maybe one of my kids runs in and needs something or whatever. I like being able just to whip off gloves. Some people will call me a sissy, but having a nice set of gloves uh, makes a big difference. It's easier to clean up. And then as far as your supplies go, uh, I use a lot of these swabs to clean patches if you're going to use a rod. I'll even use some of these larger patches here and I can use these as like a rag to wipe down. Additionally, I do have some rags uh, so I can just generally wipe. You can use, you know, the military brush. Otherwise, you can use an old toothbrush as well just to kind of scrub. And then as far as cleaning the bore, uh, you can obviously use a you know rod such as this with a bore guide would be recommended or Truth be told, these boar snakes, you know, they're not going to do as good of a job, but for a down and dirty quick field clean, they actually work pretty decent. And as far as other specialty stuff out there, you have like these, you know, chamber tools that are meant to clean the chamber. You can get these little star pad things to clean there too. So I mean, there's all sorts of little specialty gizmos and knickknacks you can use. Now, as far as solvents go, uh, generally speaking, I like the Slip 2000 stuff. This is 725. I buy it in bulk. I buy the huge container. Uh, I, it's up somewhere. And then I just put it in these small, you know, little reusable spray bottles or pour spouts or whatever. Speaking of Slip, they also make this carbon killer as well as bore cleaner. These chemicals work out really good and they can kind of take some of the elbow grease out. They can you know, make the chemicals do the work versus you. Now, if you feel that you're seeing some accuracy issues and you want to clean some of the copper fouling from your bore, you can get a copper solvent like this from Sweets. It's a very aggressive solvent, ammonia based, so be careful with it. Make sure you read the directions and use it properly. Just use a little caution and a little common sense. So that being said, let me throw the stuff on. Also, not a bad idea to throw on some glasses. You're going to be working with chemicals in case that, you know, flicks or splashes or whatever. It does suck to get it in your eyes. So whenever you're working with a firearm, obviously make sure the firearm is unloaded. We're going to check uh, by locking the bolt back to the rear, checking the magwell loading area and chamber, looking away, double check, make sure our work surface is clear of any ammunition. And now we're going to field disassemble the rifle. We're going to separate the upper from the lower and remove the charging handle and bolt carrier group. Give your carbon killer a shake. And the first thing I will do while I work on other stuff is just throw the bolt carrier group right in there. Let that start soaking, set that aside. Now I can take the charging handle and just simply wipe it down. 
I'm not necessarily making mud just yet, and this can be cleaned with some swabs and rags just by wiping out a lot of that gunk. And you're gonna make a trash pile of you know, dirty swabs and rags, and that's just fine. But I'm a firm believer in, instead of making mud, try to get as much with just rags and swabs first before we add chemicals and make a bunch of sludge and mud. I can take the toothbrush and get in there. Good enough for government work. Now, as far as my upper, same thing. First thing first, I'm just gonna, first things first, I'm just gonna take a small little rag or patch and I'm just gonna wipe out the upper. Again, try to get as much gunk and crud out of there before we go spraying. I don't need to make a bunch of mud. You can also take a swab and get the cam pen recess. Get kind of some of the areas down by the gas tube. Swab brakes, that's all right. You can get the charging handle track, and I'm trying to have it so you guys can see on camera. Never, ever, ever stick anything down the gas tube. No, pipe cleaners, whatever, nothing goes in there. I repeat, nothing goes in there. So I'm just cleaning around there and then taking a patch and kind of wiping just generally around. If you want to get into the chamber, you can use swabs and kind of either go through the ejection port and clean all around in there and come through here. That's certainly fine. Otherwise you can use one of these little star pad things and just attach it to a brush so that way it kind of spins. There, there was a, a dedicated little bit that this was supposed to attach to and I have long since lost it. But usually what I'll do now is just kind of force it on here. And then you can take that, go inside, line it up like so, and then Start twisting, and then it'll come out. Like I said, this one's not that too dirty. Uh, the other thing you can do is with this brush here, it's a nylon brush and it's uh, the shape of the chamber. I can attach it to this short little rod here. And I can insert here. And as I'm pressing, I'm also twisting. And again, I'm just trying to do this dry at first just to loosen up some of the crud, not make a bunch of mud just yet. And then I can take a swab and clean up what it loosened up. Now that I've removed a lot of the crud, I can take a little bit of solvent, spray it on a patch or a rag, and start to clean the inside. And we're just getting what's left of that crud, the stubborn stuff out of there. Now, depending on the chemical you're using, if it's water-based, you definitely want to clean it up and not leave that water in there. And in fact, you could then, uh, when you're all finished, run a lightly oiled patch or rag through there just to leave a little bit of lubrication on the surface. I'm just going to dry it out, and then when I lubricate the bolt carrier, I'm generally happy with that. Now, as far as the outside of the upper, we can again wipe that down. Muzzle devices can get actually pretty dirty and crusty, if, especially if you're using, using a suppressor. I actually just cleaned this one a little bit ago because it looked really bad. I wasn't thinking about doing a video. But all I basically did was I took a swab and I used uh, you know, some Slip 2000 or some Carbon Killer or whatever and really got in here and cleaned this really well because the, the, the crud that accumulated was pretty bad. So uh, obviously be careful. You don't want to get anything stuck in here. You can also use a toothbrush to loosen up some stuff and some rags, but you want to keep this clean so number one, your suppressor can lock on the locking surfaces, and then also the, the Chia Pet stuff that grows inside here can get pretty, pretty nasty too. So as far as the bore goes, you can use a bore snake, and you can put a little bit of the solvent of your choice on this portion here, and then just run the bore snake through a few times. And like I said, they actually work pretty decent. If you are gonna use a rod, which is certainly fine, use a good quality rod, those aluminum crappy rods, 
are junk. They can cause damage. You want to use a one-piece coated rod like this is a Dewey, and it's specific for this caliber. It's a 22 caliber. So we don't want to use something that's obviously too big, and if it's too small, it can flex. And best practice is to always use a bore guide. I find if you're going to use the rod, uh, it's easiest just to kind of secure the upper in a vise just with a little light pressure and some soft jaws. Then you can go ahead and insert the bore guide. And the bore guide has this kind of cone tipped here, and that goes into the chamber. There's a little doohickey here. That I don't use it because it's kind of a pain, and the newer styles just insert. But we're just going to line it up, make sure that is seated in the chamber. Use that there as support. And this prevents the rod from flexing. And then this port here allows me to add the solvent of my choice. So I'm just going to use a mop and I'm just going to use some bore cleaner first and just kind of soak that mop there with the solution and then it's nice as it's not getting all messy and then I can just mop the bore and kind of let that soak for a bit and now I'm just going to let that sit for a bit and let the chemicals do some of the work so now that the barrel's soaking this has been soaking for a little bit I'm going to take this out and just simply wipe it with a rag and get, again, a lot of that crud and munk off before we start scrubbing. Now I can disassemble the bolt carrier. And you can see how much that uh, carbon killer has already started to loosen up stuff. You can see it's kind of a, a slimy looking stuff versus crud. So now I can just usually wipe a lot of the gunk away. Firing pin, cam pin, firing pin, retaining pin. As far as the bolt, I'm just going to wipe that. Take a toothbrush, wipe the lugs, and then I also want to make sure the bolt face and under the extractor is clean as well. This little hook here is the extractor, and if crud develops underneath there, you might want to grab a dental pick or something to kind of scrape some of that out. Never use the firing pin to do any of that. The firing pin is not a cleaning tool. So just clean that, set it aside. I've seen it happen, okay? Now, as far as the tail of the bolt, this area here can develop some crud. If it really bothers you, they make tools. This Brownells bolt scraping tool comes like this. And you can see, you know, the carbon gunk and stuff that we're cleaning off. A little bit of, of uh, Scotch-Brite would work well. Otherwise, just a you know, just wiping it down. It's not going to kill you. So don't don't overthink it. But you don't feel like you have to get tools. Don't use a screwdriver or something like that and risk damaging it. But that looks good. And if you wanted to, you can pop the extractor off. There's just a pin there. I can do maybe another video on more of a detail strip in the future. As far as the carrier itself, again, wipe it down. They do uh, make a specific brush that you can buy for this, but the reality is I find just a bunch of swabs, and this is going to get you know dirty as you can see, but I just take my time and I start swabbing this out. And this, if it's a good quality carrier, it should be chrome lined, so it should clean up relatively easy and basically keep going until you don't see sludge anymore. So repeat, repeat, repeat. If you find that there's a couple areas that you can see down in there that are really kind of stuck, I just find that I use the back, the wooden side of the swab, and I'll just kind of use that as just like a little soft pick to kind of scrape loose some of that gunk, and then I can follow it up with a swab. But I don't want to damage that chrome lining, so don't use a dental pick or anything super aggressive inside there. And then just kind of take a look and see how it's coming along. Looks pretty good. I'm just going to clean here. And don't forget the back. Oh yeah, look at that. Good, good. Good thing we're cleaning. If you need a little bit more solvent, don't be afraid to dip your swab back into the cleaner or you can use the 725 or, you know, the cleaning solvent of your choice, really. And just repeat until they uh, start to look clean and your swabs have less and less crud. And again, you don't need to get this white glove, you know, super, super clean. 
Good enough there. Moving on to the lower, unless you're gonna disassemble the lower, uh, basically you can probably get by with just some swabs and cleaning out the fire control pocket here. Lower the hammer down slowly. We can get in there and wipe out a lot of crud and gunk. And if you see obvious powder, and if you see obvious, you know, crud and buildup or whatever, just uh, you know, get all around there and clean. The other thing I will do is remove the buffer and spring, and I'll just generally give that a uh, quick wipe down. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but a lot of times when we store our rifles, you know, up like this, a lot of the lubrication and stuff will go down into the receiver extension. So just uh, give that a quick wipe. There we go, I can set that aside and get back to the bore and finish up and we're gonna be done soon. So taking a nylon brush, I'm just gonna go ahead and run this in the bore guide and I'm just gonna go back and forth a few times. I don't need to uh, you know, do a ton of, of cleaning here and I'm holding the handle so that way the rod can rotate with the bearing. I'm just gonna go back and forth a few times. Nothing excessive. Now the precision rifle shooters are probably cringing because I didn't take the brush off at the end and if you really wanted to, you certainly could, but I'm using a nylon brush so I don't think it's that critical and I'm not going super aggressive. Now I'm gonna swap out to a jag. The jag is a pointed tip and it's my preferred way to push a patch down the bore. I don't like the eye styles that kind of just hold the patch. What the jag allows us to do is stab the center of the patch and then as we push it down, it kind of forces the patch down and we really get good contact. Now the other method that I'm gonna be looking into is these cleaning pellets I've heard really good things about. But uh, otherwise I've had a lot of good luck with just using a jag and patch and obviously they make jags specific for the caliber. So um, first things first, I'm just gonna do a dry one to clean out a lot of the chemicals that was in there. At the end, I will then remove the patch, pull back gently. And you can see it pushed out a decent amount of, of crud. We're just gonna repeat with the jag and patch just a few times just till we get some cleaner looking patches. And again, I'm still dry. Once my patches start to look clean, I can go ahead and then add just a little bit of solvent. So I'm just gonna put that in there. And then I can add a little bit of solvent. I wish I had a flip top. Now every now and again, make sure that you check your jag that it's tight. This is starting to loosen up a little bit and that gap can accumulate crud and, and scratch our bore, which is not a good thing. So just uh, repeat until the patches start to look clean. So now that my patches are starting to look relatively clean, I mean, I could be doing this, you know, you could be doing this till the cows come home and you might still get little small amounts. Uh, I don't need to get this surgically clean. I'm not that worried about it. But what I will do is I will take a patch, put it on the jag, and put a little bit of oil on the patch. Now I'll run that down the bore. And then I will follow that up with a dry patch just to get the excess oil. Obviously I don't want uh, a ton of oil down the bore. And I'm not looking to actually lubricate the bore. I'm not looking to make the bullets go out any faster. I'm just looking to put a light layer of corrosion protectant, rust protectant on the inside of the bore. So now I'm done with the barrel. And if that looked like a lot of work, uh, you can certainly just use the bore snake as well. 
Another quick tip, when you're done with your chemicals, always put the lid back on. You never know when you might knock them over and make a big mess. Been there, done that. So now that I have pretty much everything wiped down and cleaned to what is acceptable for me, is I'll just take one of these larger patches, put some oil on it, basically make an oily rag, and I'll start to wipe down the surface of everything because I was using water-based cleaning solution. I just want to make sure that we're just basically protecting against corrosion and rust. This is not meant to be my lubrication, so to speak. And I can also use a swab and put a little oil on that and then lubricate the surfaces, the inside, get to the places that I can't reach with the rag. Now, the other thing I didn't mention is the gas key here. Never, ever, ever stick anything in the gas key. I've seen stuff like Q-tips and stuff get broken off in there and that makes your gun a single shot rifle, which is not cool. So just a little lubrication. You can wipe off any excess with a dry patch or rag. Same thing with the bolt. Firing pin, cam pin, firing pin, retaining pin. I can take an oily swab and kind of lubricate the inside of the lower surfaces. And again, just a little bit of corrosion protection. Same oily patch. And I'm just wiping down the inside of the upper. If there's a spot that's tough to reach, you can go ahead and use an oily swab as well. Just wipe off the excess. Last, just a little bit of that oily rag on the buffer and spring. Now we can start putting everything back together. Now we're ready to lubricate. I'm just going to take my needle oiler, a little bit on the lugs. Bearing surfaces of the carrier, of course, cam pin, other side. Get the gas rings through the exhaust ports. Done. Lubricate the charging handle. Just take some and basically just smear. You can see where the charging handle wears, so we just want to put a little lubrication there. Just going to smear that around. Charging handle into the upper. Bolt carrier into the upper. Upper back onto the lower. Now I am ready for my function checks. If you have not seen my function check video, you can check it out right there. I'll put a card. We can go ahead and wipe down the exterior. Go ahead and clean the flashlight if that was dirty. If you find that your optics need cleaning, go ahead and use an optical grade cloth or tissue. You don't want to be uh, getting crud and stuff on there and scratching your expensive glass. But now, we are done. And that is just how I do a functional cleaning of the AR. Again, not a surgical grade cleaning. I know some people are going to cringe and comment and complain. That's just how I roll. And my firearms run very well. Cleaned, field cleaned like that, lubricated. They're taken care of and they run. So that's how I do it. Please sound off in the comment section below if you have a method that you prefer. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos. For more information about us, please follow us online and on our social media outlets. You can check out our webpage, Facebook, all that other stuff there. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day. We work really hard to make content that we hope you as a shooter would enjoy. Subscribe to our channel, check out our featured videos and playlists, and if you have a question firearms related, go ahead and send an email to the address shown on the screen to be entered into our monthly QA series.